Squamous cell carcinoma, if you catch it early and it, before it becomes unresectable, is usually easy to manage. Most of the time, the treatment is surgery. If the tumor is located on the uh, trunk, arms, legs, chest, or back, most likely an ex a simple excision would be performed where the tumor will be removed with a football-shaped sh piece of skin that includes the tumor with an adequate surgical margin. It's removed or cut out of the site and the area is sewn up and the line scar remains and the specimen is sent for pathology uh, to make sure that the margins are clear. If the squamous cell is located uh, on the face, certain areas of the face or in other areas of, where there's not extra skin, then a technique called Mohs surgery is performed. And Mohs surgery is a type of skin cancer surgery that involves examination of the tumor under a microscope during the surgical procedure to make sure the edges are clear. It has certain advantages. Mohs surgery, because of the way the uh, tumors are removed, the, the way the, it's removed, tumors are removed sort of like a piece of pie to start out with. And then you look at all the sides and all the edges of the pie and you can make sure that you get all the margins clear. The difference is that with most surgery, the margins are examined in a much more complete manner, so you're less likely to have left some tumor behind at much higher uh, cure rate. So in most cases, the uh, recurrence rate for most for primary tumors before they've you know, ever come back is 1% or less in most cases, unless the tumors are more advanced. So long-term management of cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma in most cases involves close follow-up <clears throat> and surveillance for new tumors. Um, now, if a patient has a more advanced tumor, then the management changes because uh, more advanced tumors may require more than surgery. If it's a tumor that is larger, uh, maybe it has some of those high risk factors such as perineural invasion, invasion of a nerve, <clears throat> a blood vessel, a lymph node, or it's spread somewhere, then, then other things may be indicated such as radiation therapy, possibly chemotherapy, and even immunotherapy. The risk of progression is probably on the order of 1-4% to 4 of the tumors that are seen will progress to a more advanced stage. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about staging and how we look at some of the risk factors, and those are the things that portend a higher risk of progression. Location is a big one. So location on the, on the lip, the ear, the temple, or the scalp are high risk. And then other risk factors such as size, if a tumor is greater than two centimeters in diameter, that raises the risk. If the tumor invades deeper, it raises the risk. And if there's invasion of the nerves, it raises the risk, and also if it invades beyond the subcutaneous fat and even touches bone, that really raises the risk a lot higher. So those are the main things you know, we look for as far as what are the characteristics of the tumor. And the other main characteristic that also goes along with that is poor differentiation. We had mentioned the way it appears under the microscope. The more poorly differentiated tumors are much more, much more likely to uh, progress than well differentiated tumors. What's the workup for an advanced squamous cell carcinoma? So once a tumor is determined to be more advanced, there's different things that can be done once you've uh, staged it uh, as a more advanced tumor using the staging systems that we've described. Um, one uh, uh, procedure is called a sentinel lymph node biopsy, which is controversial. So sentinel lymph node biopsy means we're looking at the first lymph node that drains the site. Now lymph, lymph nodes drain uh, cells away from the site of the cancer, and if the can cancer has gotten into the lymph node, that increases the risk. Uh, sentinel lymph node biopsy is performed by inserting a little bit of radioactive dye and sometimes a blue colored dye around the site of the tumor and then following that to the first lymph node or set of lymph nodes that drains that site and then taking those out to examine them and see if they have tumor. So that can help, although that has not been proven to be the technique for diagnosis of advanced squamous cell carcinoma. We're seeing a little bit more of ultrasound and advanced SPECT CT being looked at as more accurate diagnostic techniques to be used for advanced squamous cell carcinoma. The other tests that are used to identify disease, disease progression in squamous cell carcinoma is certainly imaging. So imaging is using radio, radiographic examinations. Most likely it's gonna be a CT scan of one kind or another or a magnetic resonance imaging MRI scan. Those are the most common uh, imaging tests that are used to evaluate squamous cell carcinoma that may have progressed uh, deeper. And there's also ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound is also being used maybe and possibly in place of uh, sentinel lymph node uh, uh, biopsy, which again is a little bit controversial. It's not necessarily been proven to, to uh, predict the outcome as well as we'd like it to. So there's other tests that are being looked at and there is that SPECT CT, which is a more advanced form of uh, uh, computer tomography scanning to look for tumors by actually labeling them so you can see them better. So those are the main things that are used. 
uh, to stage the patient, stage the tumor beyond the surface of the skin itself. So once the patient becomes unresectable, it's a different category. So now we're talking systemic therapy. And so there's three main types of systemic therapy. One would be chemotherapy, one might be targeted therapy, and one might be immunotherapy. So those are the main three ones that are used. And there's also radiotherapy, so x-ray therapy is also used, sometimes in combination with the others to affect, uh, try to affect a cure on patients with more advanced disease.